Let's get right into Icebox. Well, Tom, here we go. Kicking off map number three, Brazil looking to make history. And they're on the attack side. We've heard about Optic's defense. Let's put it to the test. Victor wanting to take some aggression right off the bat. He won't get out of there with a kill, but damage has been done. Yeah, he's also forced them back at least a little bit. And you can see that there's already been a wall deep within B. So free information for the side of Optic in the early stages of the round. And also the fact that they're just going to rely on Ye to almost take contact on the other side. So there's going to be a lot that Loud have to sort of get through if they're going to make it to a site without anybody knowing or without being stopped. Yeah, Optic's flank game going to be put to the test. You know, with the A site being covered the way it is, Loud are desperately hoping for more aggression to come through. But Optic are playing this one disciplined, perhaps knowing that they could be running in to a ready Attacking side. This is all going to be coming through the tunnel. Pancat has already gone for one. Victor with damage done earlier can convert, but now they're going to start to dive down on him from above. Sadik blindsiding and leaving it into a 2v4. They even know exactly where Finesse is, and he'll be taken down with nothing to go his way in that hole. <laughs> it needed to be a miracle with the elevated positions of the remaining players of Loud, and they do very, uh, very heavy reliance on Ye to get something in this round. I really like Loud's buy. It just gives them so much ability to duel on range on a map like this. It can be incredibly important. You can see that for now at least, uh, you have early aggression out of Optic to grab an orb, they run back, and now you're going to just see them duel slowly but surely, look to pick off a player of Loud here and there, but with the weapons that are in their hands, they have to rely on the element of surprise. Unfortunately for them, it hasn't come through. Yeah, I, I like the attack. One player basically playing straight aggressive and then the other using the screen as anti-flash to try and make his way through. Doesn't work out, but it's an idea that might be something that Optic can try and use into the future of the rounds. I think something that has to be premised, which is, is going to be quite interesting, is remains. the impact of KO. Because that's the real difference. <laughs> I thought you got that jumping for a second. Prime gaming flawless, of course. But yeah, one of the things that I think it's so valuable to have that prime gaming flawless, to walk out with two Bulldogs, the Guardian, and they've got everything to work with coming into this. And still, clearly it's going to be favored to Optic, and they should take the round, but it's about the opportunities for Loud. And as they're grouped up and looking to take these fights together, this could be very scary for any Optic member holding down. Luckily, though, there are three in position on the same side. Information early, yeah, he's already going to get that free kill and just back out of there. Pangada gone means they won't have the wall to sort of separate things off, but it looks like they're just going to try and play aggressively instead. Crashy's on the swing, doesn't get much to trade there, but actually it's gone quite well for Loud up until the point where the remaining players swing. And now it's left all on Tassada. Any more damage would be great. It's only going to be one, but even still, Mitch, three kills in that sort of round, not bad. All things considered, yeah. yeah he then farms up a free operator. Like, it, oh, <laughs> that, that's the most terrifying prospect with Ye, is just how good he is with that weapon. On this map in particular as well. He now can go it. anywhere he wants. Now the buy, not perfect for Optic. Especially in this sort of scenario, you're kind of hoping you can get things a little bit more clean. I will say as well though, the zero points that have been coming through from Victor already, and we're only in what, like round four? He's got them so much early information that, that they can almost work with their rotations and know roughly where these players are going to be. They also have both of their traps just holding into mid control. So any pressure in that direction, not going to be working out for free. It is a different face to Optic than what we're used to seeing on the so far in this series, where their defensive side is very much based around utility information and turtling. But on Icebox, you know, you're going to be pushing up every round. You can be a lunatic. Finesse hasn't been spotted just yet. I'm playing on the back of yellow with Judge is a nasty play, especially when there's already players here to tag them on the cross, to give away this information. Now, Sadik, I'm not quite sure if he's thinking about going across. He's waiting until he gets healed up, but now his utility's destroyed. That's actually a pretty big blow. It means that when he goes around yellow, he won't be able to TP out. He won't be able to escape. Oh, and sends them right into the hands of Finesse, who gets nothing done. A good answer back by Les and by Asterisk. This round is now in contention yet again. He's actually got the Viper's Pit using it here will be a risk. Oh, he baits in the swing, goes oh. for the final kill and hits it as well! The Red Bull clutch from Les! I, I won't... I, you can already see that over on Loud's side, they had the same reaction. They were getting loud, they were hyped up. With three to one on the board, facing into an eco, this is a beautiful scenario. Interesting, Ye's got the Vandal here. And I think, you know, 
Obviously, you'd say, oh, he's got the headhunter to play with, but he really wants to be able to take One a duel kill. and get that Tour de Force online. But that's the thing. One kill can make a huge oh. difference oh. in mind. Two bullets from Crashies is all he needs. He's put this round straight back into contention already. And they spotted out Victor. They aren't going to have themselves control onto the site. Yeah, he's gone. He gets his orb, but not in the manner of which he wanted. And after some dangerous potential, they put down the Viper's Pit. This can actually work in the favor, though, because they can get nice and close. Rez being baited out. The swing will come off of it to defend. And although it's way too close for comfort with, well, technically four players going down, Loud at least keep themselves at the top. You know, in this one here, Optic have a lot more than just weapons to work with. You yeah, have five play, ults. Let's it's all play. online. If you don't manage to win a round when you got five ults, either you Boys didn't use them or you're not very good. Boys well, your opponents <laughs> had five ults. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But hey, already you're going to see that all the balls put into play. This deep wall again, mainly just being used for information and to delay if they need that rotation to come through early. But at least for now, they're almost wary. There are players elsewhere, and again, it's something that Loud have been incredible at, not only within this tournament, but within their own region. It's just these slow default rounds, not giving anything up, no information. The zero point finds nothing. So as of right now, well, I have this bike. there's some information for Optic of where they're not, but they don't know where they are. Yeah, it's a pretty big map. It won't really feed you into some heavy rotations just off of spotting a small bit of control is open. 45 seconds left. Louder starting to gear up to the A site. Oh, Merv! He got wall banged down to 17 HP after using that Viper's Pit. Only barely hanging on to life. But he does manage to at least stay alive. They, they to keep his defense up. Storm and a Tour de Force. So because they've actually been hit by that null command, they, they don't have much to actually play into until that goes offline. So it's delayed them so much that there's now only 20 seconds. And unless they're going to go for a bit of a, an audacious plant around the outside, I, I think that's actually what they're going to do. They're just going to try and uh, avoid this altogether. Yeah, but that's the problem, right? <laughs> being dashed on gets taken down by Aspis Weapon, upgraded loud with full control. The res on Victor going to be committed already, but they've already narrowed themselves down to just basically a Hunter's Fury alongside the Tour de Force from Ye. A lot committed. Optic not getting very much for their trouble. And this Tour de Force just keeps on going. Sadik with a lot of control, a 4v1 in Crashy's hands. This has been a clean round from Loud. And now the tables really have turned. This is how the first map felt for Optic. Now they're on the back foot. Yeah, I feel like I have an apology that I need to make because I, I was talking earlier. I was I was talking about this guy called Ye, and I was saying, you know, his, his tour de force, it seems unfair that he's able to farm it up. I take it back. It's not. It's completely fair because Sadak is an absolute monster <laughs> with it as well. Like, d just think, wait, what problem? And the fact is it means they don't have them to play with going forward. It's only crashes with that solo rifle that he managed to keep into this round. And on the other side, okay, sure, they had to use a lot of their own ults as a counter. But it doesn't matter, because they have the economy to play with. Now again, we're going to see this early aggression coming through. Victor able to shut down B, so they've almost stacked up the other side. And Tube obviously being held off at least by a trap. This duel could give them something, but, what? well, Sessi with a huge weapon advantage will take it. Yeah, only barely still. He was left on 46 HP when Victor wasn't even ready for that fight in the first place. And look, with the pistols already, Optic are doing a ton more damage than I would expect this early on into the round. The good thing is, Loud aren't left with nothing for the damage they've taken. They've got sight control, they've got the man advantage to work with as well. And the rifle in the hands of Crashies, sure, it poses a threat, but they have a lot of players around here to deal with him. They've heard him drop down as well. So Pancata should be more than ready for that swing. And now the rifle, well, it's in Ye's hands. It's five HP. Oh, five HP. This is getting a little bit scary now. A two versus two, the time ticking. In their favor, Les looks away, but he's got the perfect flank to clean them up. You never really have to doubt at this point when this man is alive. Yeah, this is catching up to his age right now in kills. Les is 17 years old. This, wow. this is, I think, his first time on the stage. I could be wrong. Maybe someone more. Well, first time on a stage. And he is having a worldie of performance. We, we doubted whether or not this man would have the confidence. Well, right now, performing un unbelievably. Finesse, though, a good chance. Maybe to shut this out. Pancada, click on the reaction at least. Crashes in a good position, drops a spike, peeks out, lands another. But now he's being hunted. They know his position, and it's back in a 2v2. I like the idea to push up here. They know the spike is down and that Loud will try to seize back some space, but with a wall blocking them off, they have no choice. 
No way to push up towards B main instead. Right here. They're going to make their way through middle. They're being watched, and it's Ye with an operator. Not a fight that you're going to want to take. In fact, they can probably get up there and take the spike if they hug the wall. Look at, look at Crashies. He's pushing so far down that he might have a flank. Like, realistically, Ye doesn't need to overpace in this scenario, but he's going to land the shot anyway. Now Sassy starts to doubt where that second player is going to be because he's managed to get quite far. Stealing the spike's not going to be easy, but instead he's going to avoid it. He leaves it on the deck, tries to bait Ye into thinking he hasn't gone through, knows exactly where he is, but Ye ego picks him and takes him out. A second round on the board for Optic and a needed as well. So Ormis just tried to throw Optic off balance and instead, well, they end up losing the round, but they just go back to what they were attempting before. Again, going to be some early information, probably for either side. Ness is making a play once more, managing to catch them in the last couple of rounds. He's in a very good position here. First goes his way, but getting out of there is not going to be easy. He's managing to dodge the bullet, dance around, but Sassy will put him in the grave. Caught him on the way back through. Loud. And they're even hearing Victor jump around as well. They know that he's here. He's got his oh. knife out. No idea that Les is already behind him. Viper's pit available, and it's going to be used to guarantee the plant. And at this point, Oh, Sadik, you nasty. Okay, <laughs> he almost got cut. So close to going down. Instead, he's going to be the thorn in the side, buying so much time for his team. Those Optic have to try to deal with him. Good shot by Ye. Now they know that both players are around here, at least. And the thing is, playing into the Viper's Pit's not going to be easy. They need to close Sadak, and actually, Crashies wins that battles as well. Revealing the thing area. is, there is a wraparound coming through from Sassy again, going on that late, late flank. He's going to be watching, waiting, killing off those players that they tried to leave, or maybe not shock killing them off. It's become a very awkward <laughs> battle. He'll just use his shock dart instead. And while Ye's already made the decision just to save, again, playing into that Viper's pit just seemed like an inevitable victory for the opposing side. And it will be now a seven. That half is one for Loud on their attacking side. And while at least they're going to save an operator, I guess. They might not. They really might not. There's a push they coming through on track. both sides. Loud are trying to deny this weapon. They've spotted him out, but Ye could be a huge factor. We thought it would be, but last time he pulled it out, Sadik had the answer. This time, not even a scoped weapon for Loud to play with. And you've already heard the Tour de Force pop. A lot of players stacked up on A as well. This is going to be a big fight for Optic, but they've got to come out ahead, especially when they're stacked like this. Yeah, clearing him from this spot. Not going to be easy with the information there. Almost trying to set him up. It's not a shot connected, and he has to duck out. The initial battle not going their way, and in fact, almost having to surrender up the majority of this site. Excellent work from Loud to be able to clear. Pop flash gives them a chance to swing. Crashies already being able to find out one. Yeah, he's got another. The swing from Alves. Oh. He's going to connect and go back through. Runs out of bullets, but the oh. jumping oh. shots grants him a third. It leaves Marv alone. Operator in hand, he's given one for free and puts it into this 1v1 scenario. Sadak trying to bait him in up top, swinging across, even going back around behind him. Neither player really having the information of where the other currently resides, but the spike tap <gasps> might just give it away. Marv scoped in, but the peek doesn't come through. Sadak desperately hoping that someone's going to peek him, and Marv, he will land it on that Red Bull clutch. Oh, wow. I think I was holding my doing him dirty. 7-3 we go either way. Optic managed to recover the round. Now they come into this round with Operator, but look at Loud. They've got two ultimates. It's again the same thing. Tour de Force and Blade Storm. Aspis not going to connect to start with. He's going to be cancelled out as well. And that's a perfect null command to completely deter any Loud aggression. Yeah, it'll slow down the push as well. Because the fact is two of their players are currently using weaponry that revolves around their abilities. You've got the Blade Storm. And the Tour de Force. Now, th this is the bailout that Loud have with their economy, is those two ults can save them when they start to run out. And now they're going to swing back in the other direction. Lesto is actually caught by Crashies again. This man just seems so good at catching them off guard and finding such impactful kills. This removes the screen completely. And in this round where, again, Finesse has that weak weapon, having to go to a Spectre, it's huge to find that early duel. A res online to play with as well in the hands of Optic. And although Loud have theirs, it's down, not looking like they're going to get to use it. Pankata taken down by Marv. Aspas tagged up by the Hunter's Fury. Only barely surviving again, thanks to Finesse having such a weak weapon. I'm actually amazed he's still alive here. Rez, though, looking to try and confirm this one. 
it shouldn't there, really though. be a chance. That's the problem. He's only got himself a single knife remaining, and while that's already going to dissipate, it leaves it all on to Sassy and a good recovery there from Optic. Not allowing anything to come off the back of those weapons. More importantly, getting a fourth on the round. And, and if they get this back to five, Mitch, it's, it's definitely not a done deal. Oh, it, it is a remarkable recovery if they finish this. In some, and now, after what was a terrible start to the half, Optic might actually be able to walk out of this one in a pretty good spot. Even using the Viper's Pit at the start of this round, that's guaranteeing that's the control. Just through yeah, he's walking up. And he's ready for this. He's heard it. Oh, but it, it, it's too late, though. Right. Aspas is gone. Like, sure, he's, he's going to get one behind him, but now his teammate's being pressured. A oh. plant likely, but another shot landed from Ye. It might be enough. Marv also still holding within the pit. They might have wrapped around behind him, but he's ready. Hiding in the corner. So smart just to make sure that isolating him is going to be incredibly difficult. And he's landing absolutely everything. Sassy still trying to hunt this man within the pit. And he's got lost within it. Yeah, and look, Marv is actually tracing his footsteps as well. <laughs> Sassy walking back through, seeing it wide open. He's going to walk into finesse. Round closed out, half closed out. Five rounds for Optic. I did not see this one coming. Uh, Tom's having some microphone issues, but uh, yeah, he said easy. Easy game, I think. Oh, oh, is that Su Sushi out? No. So here we go. <laughs> half number two kicking off. Already got a blade going over towards yellow. And they know there's a player up top now. Sadik destroyed it less. Grabbing a tag, two players in position. Sadik able to grab one TP out. And this is a poor start for Optic, at least able to heal up the damage onto Ye, but if Crashy's down, they lose a lot of their initiator utility, their ability to fight behind the wall. And of course, that drone that they're going to want to clear out some of those ranged angles. They've got to be careful of Aspas. It seems like they're definitely aware of the potential of his push, but he might be able to just kill oh! <laughs> It's one bullet. But actually, it's going to be Sadak going down instead. They left Ye lurking around, and that kill might be enough just to try and bring them back in the direction. Now, they've got to be careful, because Les trying to be a little bit cheeky around the edge of this screen, but not necessarily wanting to overcommit here. Only one bullet remaining in that headhunter for Ye, and then the round's going to get pretty difficult for him in ranged fights. He's going to hold on to it for now. You can see the movement coming around. The A site wall will break in the next couple of seconds, and Optic are going to look to push through left. to the A site on the back of that. He's got two slows, though. That's, like, that, that's the thing. This wall was put down so late that it almost becomes very awkward for them, and he's going to be the, able to delay them even further. Slow in. Okay, they might be able to delay a little bit more with the screen also put into place. This is really difficult for them Shut to try and push through. Oh, Shut up. This oh. is so well played from Loud. That's one of the most perfect pistol rounds I think I've ever seen a team play. Four in a row for Loud. They're, they've won the last four pistols. They just keep clocking them up. Ahead. And you cannot underestimate the early advantage that that gives you, being able to build up Getting those rounds. Ahead. It does, however, rely on you winning the follow-up, which, I mean, Optic have looked okay with pistols in hand, and especially the headhunter on Ye, but they don't have a lot to play around outside of Finesse and Ye. Like, it's classics. Well, I'm seeing Aspas. I'm seeing a marshal, and I'm, I'm getting flashbacks. Ah, they're going the other side, though. Look, <laughs> going to the B side. They're not going to give can, it to him. He can retake. <laughs> if they have to retake, I think it's already a pretty no, big that problem. Is true. That is true. Sadak's here as well, though. Only two bullets left. There's only so much that Ye is going to be able to do here, and they are pretty well set up for a, a quick rotation. Green going down a little bit deeper, but Les just playing above it, and they have a tasty little crossfire to try and delay anyone through. Finesse will at least be able to take one, but it's now left onto Victor just to try and get anything else. Even an extra kill here would be huge going into the next one. They have a buy, but it's controlled from Loud. Only one player lost. And while uh, Sadak, I think, is even going to... ...in hand, Ye has to take light shields, but not the end of the world. Really, what I want to see, though, is what Loud have planned. With weaker weapons, typically we see aggression, oh. and Loud have been a big fan of aggressive plays so far. Sadak's already up in their face, but he's been spotted. He's going to fall back now, that play works. with the team. They might try to punish him and end up walking into these other two, especially now with the TP, faking yeah. out that they've left. They've seen Aspis. They know the other guy's gone, but they don't know about Les. Who's tucked up in this corner. Pancata's being caught pushing A, though, and this will stop Optic from really just running forward and giving it away. And with Les peeking into them, right that's here. an easy punish. Yeah, it, the, the surprise factor was there, but it's not going to be fallen for. Sadak now the only defender of this site. Again, any damage he can do in this round would be fantastic, but you can see how patient Optic are being. Making sure they clear out other portions of the map. You can see the rotation starting to go back in the other direction, and 
Sanak has been able to dodge the utility, but that's almost just a ruse. It's trying to pull players in as they slowly <laughs> lurk back towards this A site. Optic have played a very good round, and now Fight the only drop. man that stands in their way is Sasak. Drone might even spot him out. In fact, he gives it away first. The peak yielding no results. The Bulldog tagged up on his way back out, and the punish from Marv catches both. Six on the board for Optic, and what's most important is that prime game Aspas straight in onto the Operator. It seems like Sadak is just going to be playing with the Headhunter in this round at least, unless he can get a fair few kills. And already Aspas is really trying to poke the bear with an aggressive swing. I like the idea, try to uh, assert that map control early, but this time around, nothing connected. You've got an orb blocking off mid, and look at Marv sneaking his way in towards the tube, hoping to grab a kill in the late round or have the same lurk that I mean, we saw from him in the previous round. It's, allowed. it's slow play, but they're stacked up towards the A side of the map, having so much information from Sadik. Now, though, he's in trouble. He's given up the control, and he'll try to grab a peek or two with the headhunter in hand. Nothing found, and he can stick around a little longer. Great <laughs> shot, but it's not the kill. He still has the TP online, he's waiting to use it. Wants to try to grab a frag first, now revealed on the back of yellow. Nades are coming through, and he realizes, okay, I, I've eaten enough utility, time yeah. to get out. He still manages to buy a lot of time, though. That, yeah. That's like 20, 25 seconds just off him taking ridiculous jewels that realistically had no right of ever winning. Still, though, deeper control going to be taken. Not left. really a whole lot they could do. Shock Dart, not quite going to close out Finesse. So they will manage to get themselves into an afterplot. Marv is still waiting in the tube, hoping perhaps that Sadik goes down to delete that bit of utility and allow him to flank. Or to catch the rotations there, Sadik down. Now it's Marv's time to shine. He's going to be sneaking through, grabbing this off angle, already deleting Sassy. And with this control, they have to go back and deal with him. And Les does exactly that. His third kill in the round. They're defusing inside the orb, but Crashies shuts that one down. A quick double to give the round over to Optic. And we know if he's going to be able to use it. And for Optic, well, this is them right back into the map, a map that they were looking out of in the early rounds. Yeah, an incredible recovery. The mental to keep themselves in it the whole way. And I mean, I'm sure that first map helped, but it's been hard to find a lot of positives when we started things out here. But now with just two rounds between them and pistols in the hands of Loud, this is the most promising prospect for Optic so far. Now, Loud, obviously we saw them try some nasty setups towards B earlier, and Optic really didn't fall for them. I think now after seeing how cautious Optic are in the anti-ecos, Loud decide to spread out the net a little bit more, look for some duels, and of course still have this aggressive position for Sadik, but that's why they're droning it out, and he'll do well to avoid this if he does. It's turning around, it's checking below, and there it is, it spotted him. Yeah, he's, he's definitely stuck in an awkward position, but area. it's just going to be falling back. Still able to, again, just are. buy an awful lot of time, but the fact is, because of this, the rest of the players haven't rotated. He still has vision, yeah. so they can have a full stack up on this side. Yes, the weaponry is atrocious, left. but it's just the numbers that could make it awkward. Could definitely be the difference maker. Now, they've spotted a bunch of players here. Sassy and Les showing up on the pistols. Cat is punished on the way back, Les with another. They're even forced to use the res. Already it's a costly round for Optic. With 10 seconds left, they're in danger. A great tag in, Crashies, 14 HP to play with. They can't throw utility at him, and they can't get to him. The plant is secured, and Optic now just need to deal with these last two players. But that might not be that easy of a task. I mean, now with the suppression gone, Les can actually use his Viper's Pit, but it's finding the opportunity to do that that's really gonna be the problem. Oh, <laughs> trying to find something on the oh. road. Sadak also has his headhunter back, which was taken away just moments ago. Viper's Pit now is utilized, but instantly removed by Victor. And they will close out the round. It is way too close for comfort for Optic, but they stabilize. Hype up a lot of fights in this, and I think probably you're looking at Ye and Aspas most of the time, but blindsided by less in this series. Even still, Loud only lead by one round. And it's been quite a while since they've gotten one on the board. Momentum in Optic's favor. And Sadik. Oh, this is not a great early fight. He gets tagged up, luckily not taken down. He's able to fall back and leave his utility to hold position. He'll spot them as they come past the choke point. But now he needs to land his shots, Tom. He doesn't have an escape for another couple seconds. There's an opportunity. 
They found my trap. It's not gonna connect it, and they're, they're now starting to close in on his position. This space is not a particularly good one. Left completely blind, and ah, that has gone as badly as it could have done. Sadak completely isolated, oh. and now Sassy's gonna pop himself the Hunter's Fury, desperately trying to get them something back in this round. It's a couple of tags, but no kills. Two tags will help, and Aspis is on the flank. Moving into their spawn, containing them for now. The problem is that Welcome the front lines aren't that world. strong, and now you're gonna have players unable to really say anything with their utility. Tankata completely cancelled out, less at least good for a kill, but then they lose spawn. And with Sassy down, a Viper's Pit covering the back, this is a very advanced plant that probably won't be read for the most part, and although he's, Tankata he's gets not past, one. they're not watching the flank. He's managed to get past oh, no. all of the utility. He smoked it off as he walked through. I don't know if this is gonna be expected. Yeah. They've spotted him move within the pit. This one should be free. That's at least the first. Now they don't know where the remainder is. The swing around from Marv might have just changed it. And now it's left onto the Viper versus Viper. Les needs a huge play and he's right on the edge of it. Marv making that move around and just looking to try and tap onto the spike. He's gonna get it to half, but surely there shouldn't be an opportunity here for Les to do anything else. He does not know where that last man is, but he made a noise. He's not gonna check above, at least for now. His teammates might have just called it out. And again, Let's is gonna come through when they need him the most. A tenth round on the board. This man is on fire. Unbelievable clutch to win that in the tournament so far for them. As they now get their way to double digits and well, you Optic, want to play? Let's they're gonna play. have a buy. They've got themselves a tour de force, so definitely don't count them out in any stretch. But that is a blow. Ten to eight. A two-round lead. Maybe that's the wind in loud sails now. That was a risky little peek out of Pancada. Hunter's Fury landing a tag. No kill. Drone down mid. Spots them at this point. You know Optic are spreading the net again. Ooh, oh, actually, Ye is walking all the way through. This is an incredibly aggressive push. He has no escape from here, but he's going to go for it anyways. Looking now to duel down the alley. This tour de force could decimate anybody that peeks into it, but instead louder just giving him the space. You're like, hey, you want kitchen? Yeah, take it, dude. No problem. You're not getting on the site. But now it opens the avenue for them to challenge Pancata from two different angles, and that could be problematic. He's going to try to push in. Yay. Won't hit the <laughs> shot. <laughs> That's, that, that is ego in Ye. I don't think you'll be used to someone doing that, Tim. Rez online. Tankad has managed oh, to come through. Oh, and Victor's completely confused. He thinks he's still down by the tube, and now he's managed to take a weapon. Sadak has found space oh, as well, oh, and now it left five, all onto Crashies, trying to take himself home. A one versus five. Well, he'll get the one. But yeah, that round. God, man, it would previously sprinted with a Guardian into a Tour de Forest. A confident play, they the yield the result, run. and now with a three round lead, they are just two away from booking their spot in the Grand Finals and making history for Brazil. Optic, five players stacked up. Look at the weaknesses here though. Both Marv and Finesse are having to play with Spectres. Aspas, an aggressive position. <laughs> Already going to tag him up, so forcing him back, and they've got the screen to give him that extra little bit of space to fall. So going to utilize the wall fairly early, and well, you can see the fallback after the drone tag, just basically trying to delay as much as humanly possible. Still, though, four players here at the moment for Loud. They've got a solid read. Oh, yeah, they know exactly what's going on again. Sadik's aggression has been incredible. The only risk is somebody walking through middle, getting behind them under tube. But even then, that's Sassy's responsibility. He's been watching it. He's been using his util optic, making their way forward. And Aspis will be the, probably the first point of contact here. The wall's just gone down, revealing a lot of these players. And a whiff. This could be costly. Aspis up above is taken down, but that's the only kill for Optic. They're left down with just one man, and Crashies gets nothing done. 12 to 8. This is going to be mad. Even, even saying Definitely themselves. They're a strong team. But, but they said themselves, don't hype us up too much. Yeah, don't put us on that pedestal. I feel like they, we might have underrated yeah. them just because of their own comments. Yeah, sorry, Sassy. We're going to have to put you up there now, man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think Sadik actually avoided that drone. Okay. Pancata down. I'd like the flash play through the smoke, detecting a weakness that that mid play didn't have the utility to cover. The wall's going to be broken, though. They can't commit to the plant instead. Player they standing. stand and fight, and that's exactly what they needed to do. Aspis, the last man alive.
Now 1v4, an ace clutch needed after already finding Marv. This might just be a little too much to ask, and it looks like Optic will stay alive for at least a moment longer. Yeah, it's, it seems after the last round, they've taken the information they gained by Pankata's previous position <laughs> and used it to their advantage in this one, a much faster paced take. Now, for Loud, in terms of economy, there's not a lot of risk here. On the other side of Optic, they can't really afford to fight this man too much. You can see he's got his Bladestorm. So he doesn't even need to really worry about losing his weapon here. There'll be plenty available, whereas they have to be very careful. Three kills for him. Again, got to force a lot of rebuys for Optic going into the next round. Into You've got that board. 13 on the board. So there is plenty still to play for here. Weaponry, not going to be too much of an issue. An early ball. use of that Viper's Pit. The drone actually not going to be able to completely clear him, or spot him at least. An aggressive push from Aspas actually dropped. This luck has worked out wonderfully, and now he can try and reclaim that control over the pit. This man is on 30 kills and looks to try and find a couple more. Victor and Ye both one HP. They've been tucked inside this ult the entire time, waiting for the aggression to come through, waiting for Les to retake the control. And there's the reward. One dropped rotations heard. They know now that the A-side is where the push oh! will come through, <laughs> and Sadik has caught them on the cross. Now they can sit back. They don't need to overcommit, but with three players on the A-side already, Loud want to fight. They want to close this one out with a bang. The res, though, on Marv, it might buy them a little bit of an opportunity, less attempts to punish it, but he'll get nothing. Him. And because they saw him and the pit now it went down, they're going to walk onto the beam. Ah, this is so much information. There's a res on the other side, but it's likely not going to be utilized. And that control will grant an afterplant for the side of Optic. Not much they can do about that wall. Not going to be broken in time. Lester over the top has managed to catch another. A Viper's Pit on the other side and a lurk from Crashies makes it back into a three versus three. And still the pressure on for Loud. Take a look at what Loud has to work with here. No, no drone to find Marved inside that pit. Rez gonna come through, they're committing to it, 4v3. So difficult to get this control, they hope that the spams will yield them something at least. And they've spotted one up close, Finesse dealt with. This is getting scary for Optic. They're on the back foot now, stuck right at the back of the pit. Crashies is charging forward, trying to deal with them, and he's doing just that. It's all left on to just one. <laughs> this spike is gonna take them both down. Marv, the man who went down, Rez down. After it that. years to beat this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a few OTs in there as well. Yeah, in an upper bracket finally. You know, you do this in early stages, opening game. I'm going to say the other team's bad, but that's not the case no, here. No and with doubt. two rounds between them, Optic, they need to prove that they've got what it takes to bring it all the way. The operator on Sadik is pushed out. Good recon. The utility clearing back yellow as well. This is giving them a lot of control and a lot of room to play with. An old orb recovered. Won't really play into all too much just yet. Victor's still quite far away from that ulti. The drone clears a lot of space. Problem is that wall's going to go down fairly soon, so Vanessa does well to close the distance. Pop this down. This is a fake. They baited it out. They baited out the Hunter's Fury, and now they're going to pressure him. Ye gets that spot on. The timing onto Sassy, there was nothing that he could do. And again, they're going to start to reset back in the other direction, but they're leaving players behind. This push and pull from Optic has been sublime on this attack. And there's only going to be one man in their way, and he's just not connecting those knives. He says the Vandal to work with, but Sadik going down. The numbers are so thinned out Planted. for Loud. This is almost a... Oh, kill. okay, kill for Pankata. Still, 2v4, the weapons that they've got, the economy is very low. It looks like they're opting for the save. Pulling back to fight at 12 to what, what will be 12 to 11. And I think that's guaranteed now. Loud on the other side of the map. Incredible recovery by Optic. And it feels like that has been the story for them, right? Their disruptive play to start was incredible. They haven't really been able to do the same moving on to Ascent in the same way. And certainly here, I think familiarity with the, the maps and the setups, really that, that gap closed in after Fracture. Yeah, I, I think as well, the other thing is just that control. Like th their attacking side has been something to warm up. But just before it did, they hit the replay up and I heard, I am the hunter. I was going to be like, Crashies, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> but no, okay. 12 to 11. Hunter's Fury online for Team Optic. That's the only ult they've got to play with, but it's damn sight better than what Loud have. 
Weaker weapons coming out in the form of a Bulldog Utility. Still pretty healthy. Over on the loud side, this is the final round of regulation. Optic gonna try to bring us to overtime here and now. And Sticking look at look dead. at how slow they're playing this again. They like to apply the pressure, but the players on the other side of the map are holding for Loud to push up and seize map control. This time, though, Loud are not having any of that. They're not going to be found by some early aggression. Instead, they wait, they turtle, and they allow Optic to make the first move. Yeah, you see early shock darts as well coming out from Optic, basically just trying to destroy the traps and give them a little bit more freedom around the map, although it hasn't really worked out. And because of this more passive hold that's currently there, Optic are now slowly making their way forward. Now, there's a relatively aggressive position. They're also going to pop themselves a Hunter's Fury. This actually pulls more players in towards that A site, but it hasn't baited the rotation just yet. Sadak holding on the edge. He's still got the ability to escape. He's just going to wait for that pick, and he nails Marv. That's a problem as well, because that removes the screen. The snake bite down instantly stops any sort of a plan from coming through. They don't have the utility to cover as they push forward. All these angles opening up for Loud, and the kills are going their way. It's left to Finesse, and he falls as well. Brazil have done it. They've made history as they go all.